Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave, and we are diving deep into things again with our friends from Lumafield. John, how are you? Adam, so great to be here. Dude, this, this is a really exciting one, and it's got some personal resonance for me. So this is the Digital Derby Auto Raceway Mechanical Toy. Before there were Game Boys, before there were LCD screens, I will tell you, before this, we had like water-filled games where you pumped water and made like little hoops and things land on sticks. And this was like a sea change. This came out in 1978. I specifically remember asking for this for Christmas um, and playing it so, I played this game so much, I came to understand that it was literally impossible to get a perfect score. <laughs> like you can get, I think you can get 99. I can't remember what lap count it was, but whatever the highest was, I think yeah, it was yeah. like 99. I could never get there. I got to 97 and I just kept on going and I realized, no, it's not actually possible. You were never able to flip over from 99 to zero, zero. No. And, and then it broke and I do remember taking it apart, uh -huh. but this is an entirely mechanical game that is replicating the experience of a screen-based game. That's right, it's a side scroller, a top to bottom scroller. Yeah. Indeed, and I love the fact that the, the crash symbol is always in the same location, which seems kind of like a cheap solution until you're playing it and then you're completely That's involved. Right. But it taunts you, right? It burns itself into your head. You imagine that crash light right there in the middle. Indeed, and you asked me when you brought it here about turning it off. And I was playing with it before I sent it to you, and I remembered there actually is no on or off switch. You literally put batteries in, and you press until you get from F to S to start, and then it just goes for the full, whatever, three minutes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. There's no putting it down. You have to finish your game. That's incredible. Yeah, great excuse to tell your parents. I cannot, I literally cannot stop this game. Right. I, and the insides of this, I, I'm sure this is all a bunch of gear trains and stuff, but it, like it speaks to, to me, a, sort of a whole expertise from the toy industry that was probably really burgeoning back then. All these people doing tons of complex gear train work. That's right. That is done at what? A, a thousandth of a fraction of that now. Yeah, that's right. Now you see something like this and you just assume that there's a microcontroller in it because yeah. a microcontroller is so cheap. Writing a little bit of software is cheaper than optimizing a huge gear train. But and there's almost no microcontroller in here, right? It's just there mechanical is switches? literally no microcontroller wow, in Wow, nothing. <laughs> it's just very, very primitive electromechanical you know, switches. There's a motor. There's a little relay. For the purposes of clarity, I'm going to play around with this Great. game so the audience understands how this works and the absolute peak of non-digital mechanical toy technology <laughs> from 1978. All right, so I, if I remember correctly, I have to press start for this whole time until the arrow reaches S, the start button. So. There we go. Oh. Now you're using the transmission there to slow down and speed up and I am. come to a standstill. Oh, and I get a crash. <laughs> it functions, but it's a little it's a little spotty. The the two roads move in different orientation to each other, and that's how you can exploit to get the cars to separate so you don't crash into them. And I literally remember playing this for so many hours. I figured out all the shortcuts. I mean, I could probably play it blind when I was like 12. And here comes a crash. Bam! You're already up to 21 laps. And I think the actual number counter might also be having a little trouble. <laughs> you can hear this thing is really old. Struggling a little. It is. I mean, it's not bad for a 35-year-old toy. No, 45-year-old toy. Yeah, I haven't pulled out C-cell batteries in a really long time. Yeah. That was not as ideal a playing uh, demo as I wanted, but I can't even describe how many hundreds of hours of pleasure I got from this thing. I just remember that sound, the shifting back and forth. Um, I I can tell this is old. I can tell it needs a little greasing. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to tuning it back up. That's right. <laughs> Gotta hit the record that you had when you were Exactly, playing. exactly. <laughs> I, I, it, yeah. Okay, so with that understanding of how the game plays, let's take a look at the inside. Great. So this is a CT scan of it that we got uh, by 
taking a series of, of X-ray images that, and uh, as we rotate it inside the scanner. And this lets us reconstruct a 3D model of it. What um, is the resolution of the rotation? How many photos are you, how many X-rays are you taking to achieve a three, full 360 rotation? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, this was a thousand uh, different X-ray images. That, so, that we uh, and that's not only on one plane of rotation, but on multiple planes of rotation? Just or is one, it just one? Just one, okay. just one axis, yeah. So it's just, it's, um, it's angled. Uh, it. as it but it it's just rotating on one axis so it's turning rotating around the z axis so to so speak so am i right now looking at all the metal in it that's right yeah so in an x ray image uh, less dense materials which are higher or materials higher on the the periodic table are lighter mm -hmm. and denser materials or those that are lower on the periodic table are darker so you're seeing the light outline of all the plastic and then the dark outlines of the metal components so there are I, a lot of rods in here. I have. do see a lot of rods, and I'm assuming that some of these rods are the central axles for the for the cars on tracks, the, the right. cellophane cars. And then, uh, you know, this is familiar as well, right? This is a motor, this yeah. is a DC motor. Yeah. And then uh, this is the the relay that we're going to take a look at in in, um, in a few minutes. Okay. But yeah, a lot of lot of a uh, lot of rods here that have um, plastic gears mounted on them, and then of course here's the um, here's the light bulb as well. Oh, that is! Look at that! Right in the middle of the crash. Yeah. Crash, right? So let's take a look at uh, at at this in in three D. So we're we're oh, looking at it now. This is the three D reconstruction from those X ray images, and we're looking at it from the front. So this is the the angle here. Mm -hmm. You can see this uh, the outline of the of the crash symbol, yeah. letting you know it's kind of like a Tex Avery style, like you know. Um, action. There was uh, there was a whole shape. set of meetings about this one. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. I'm some, sure of it. Yeah, some product managers talked about it. Um, here you go. It's like a. It looks like a Christmas tree bulb. I mean, this is a little incandescent light bulb. It's amazing that this uh, 40, it's... 50 year old uh, light bulb is still working. Um, and then uh, you know, let's take a look at how some of this how some of this actually works. Yeah. So the steering wheel. If you look down here. Uh, that's, oh, look, it's a little rack and pinion. It's a little rack and pinion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what it's moving, it turns out, is um, is kind of a carriage. So I'm gonna I'm gonna peel away uh, the the plastic mm -hmm. and just isolate the metal here. Okay. Um, so right above the steering wheel, we're gonna see um, just the metal components, and right. I'll make them a little more opaque. Um, these are interesting. These are a pair of contact arms, and they they slide back and forth as you rotate the steering wheel. Uh huh. And they are able to to go through little slots in the uh, in the film as they rotate. So oh, you can so the film is actually providing a barrier to electricity or allowing it through based on whether there's a slot or not. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So it's they're out of view. They're behind these right. uh, rails on the sides of the screen. And am I correct that they are exactly where the cars are? They are, um, or they're offset from they're where the cars are by a little bit. That's I right. think I really, I really, I'm having this sense memory of being 13, which is like after two years, I had broken this thing and I took it apart. And I, I remember seeing the slots in the side of the cellophane yeah, yeah, yeah. and surmising eventually how this mechanically did it. That's job. right. That's right. Yeah. So there, there's a circuit that's open as long as you haven't collided with any cars, and then uh, and, and then, collided with any cars means as long as the steering contact hasn't reached a slot adjacent that matches a car. That's right. That's right. So here's one slot here. It's barely visible. Here's another slot here. Right. Uh, this had just crashed when we scanned it. So so you got the, to see the a slot is lined up. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, the 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 contact is is um, is going through the through a slot here. Gotcha. Um, it's this is the end of the contact. So we're looking at a two D slice now of the three D model. This is how like radiologists read CT scans, <laughs> slicing up and down. Um, but here's here's a contact, and it's going through a, a slot that you can see very faintly there. Can I? I want to ask you a, a philosophical question. Yeah. When you started this whole and when you started with this whole enterprise, you had in your in your head professionally, a lot of institutional knowledge about how things are built and about manufacturing processes. But I'm assuming that over the few the last few years you've been doing this, you've gotten a much deeper understanding of it. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. All of us, you know, the, the founders of the company were all engineers who had built uh, mechanical and electrical products. Yeah. Um, but all of us have learned so much from just being able to like look inside anything. I mean, so you, you just you, go around the world and like scan a light bulb, scan Christmas tree bulbs, scan, uh, you know, 
mechanical toys, and you get to see how they work. And you get the, you get this X-ray vision for yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, oh, that's probably what's wrong in here. Exactly, and then you can work your way backwards, and it's a little bit different. You know, you can take this apart, but looking at it this way, you get to see it in assembly, and you right. get to see sort of how it works in in practice with everything in situ. Yeah, exactly. Um, what are these guys over here? Yeah. Okay. So these are. Um, this is really the gear train, and oh. uh, what we're seeing in that last shot was was the um, this pair of gears here that have concentric uh, oh. rings of teeth. Okay, so that's 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 a um, that's a transmission. That's right. That actually shifts gear ratios. Yep. So oh, that's this guy. It's yeah. one, two, and three. It's it's your actual uh, stick shift. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Your exactly. Shift. Your automatic shift. Yeah. Yeah. So here we can we can look at uh, you know slice up and down, and you see you see those gears. See, I recognize you. it's specifically that spool that yep. is such a, 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 a like a, a noteworthy part of a transmission of moving one gear train to that's another. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Here are your three. Here are your three speeds. Wow. Right. And then uh, neutral would just disengage it. Um, so there you have that, and then you have these, these, uh, offset gears here at, at angles that are moving. Um, and what are, th why are those at angles? I'm curious. I'm not sure about that. I'm not, uh, I think that these are driving the two, um, the two, uh, spools of film independently. Right, right, right. I see. So they're somehow transmitting, um, I always know. imagined that there was a, a sprocket and that there might be sprocket holes in the films. Uh, I believe there are. Yeah, yeah. There's the there's the yeah. Uh, there's oh right, the you can see film. it. Yeah. So it's got it's got sprockets. They're oh being... god! I wonder if they ended up using like blank 16 millimeter film for the prototype. Oh, I bet. I mean, you know, right? it's, toy, I... toy manufacturers are very clever about cost uh, cost reduction, and you would want to dig into an existing. Uh, right. Existing hey, Kodak, we're going to need a whole bunch chain. of un untouched yeah, that's right. cello. That's right. That's brilliant. It's harder to find now. I'm really curious about this whole arrangement of the non-orthogonal yeah. uh, spindles. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what that would um, what that accomplishes, uh, but you know, you can see that it's intentional. It's not just it's not yeah, damaged because yeah, yeah. they've designed the injection molding on those angles as well. So I'm just really curious. Fascinating. Okay, we're gonna have to take this thing apart. Yeah, let's do it. And here is the, the function. That actually looks like it might be 35 millimeter film cut in half. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, then you don't wind up with the, the sprocket holes on both sides. Wow. Okay, so if we put the steering wheel back on, we can watch the function here. So there's that rack and pinion. Yep. And as this, as this, wow. So right, there's the, there's the slots you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so they're not lined up directly next to the cars, right? This, this is probably, actually, this is probably the slot corresponding to this car because that'll wrap back right, under. Because I see a copper contact down there underneath. Yeah. See that down there? Wait, but that's No, wait, not... sorry. This this would be the slot that corresponds to this car because this car is going to move backwards and by the time it gets to here, that slot will be right at the contact below. Oh, right. Okay. And it's do it's directly underneath the crash. Yeah, that's right. Um All right, that's the number counter. The contacts are not in fact floating left and right as you move the car. So something else is telling you is telling the system whether the car is in the lane. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, so this ah. Oh, so it just disengages. So when, the when you reset, it disengages the track, yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. not actually logging more more uh, track time. And that's all this big thing is mm -hmm. is a lever for disconnecting your number counter. That's right. And disconnecting the crash light and sound, so it's undoing that contact there. Mm -hmm. Look at that giant glob of solder. 1970s man. <laughs> yeah, that's a human being sitting there with a soldering iron. Incredible. Um, I'm looking at the systems and I'm seeing that they're really quite modular and it looks like there's four. It looks like there's a steering and counting system here. We've got the timing system up here. We've got the driving system up here and the actual road here. And the, 
there's there's that transmission. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, and there's a there's a, a pinion that moves. Yep. I feel like I'm going to try and pull the drivetrain and transmission system out of here. Let's see here. Oh, look, they used all the same size screws. See? I appreciate that. Okay, so actually as I'm moving this, oh, wow. There's three different tracks of movement. There's the center line mm-hmm. of the road and there's each track. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, we're doing really well here. <laughs> oh. Okay, so there's the steering wheel rack and then there's this guy here Mm -hmm. which is just the keeper for the rack so it slides well ah there's your culprit yeah there it is so that's so there's got to be another switch under there um so that the circuit only closes if it's right this uh if this contact closes on through the film and um that must touch something else below that would uh that would indicate which lane the car is in. Here we go. And that's, there it is. Yeah. So that contact goes over there. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, so when it moves over here, it's touching this one, which can Uh reach a contact. And when it's moving over here, it's touching this one, which can reach a contact. There's a bar underneath each of these. Yeah, so there's a, there's a, a piece of brass that runs through the whole thing. Right, right. So this way, they're avoiding the wear that they would get on the film if if these contacts were actually, you know, sliding back and forth. Oh, right. So these things are, are just ever so lightly touching the film. And here it is. Yep. That's a crash because right. it's in the middle of the film. Yeah, and they are wearing the film. I mean, you can see on the on the film, but that's not in view. Not in the visible. That is really cool. I mean... Just imagine, there's this team of engineers who spent months on this. Yeah. And this whole thing was available for, you know, just a few dollars at KB Toys or something. I mean, this business here of the, um, again, of this non-orthogonal gears, mm-hmm. it's it probably really does have to do with manufacturing tolerances. Yeah for how they interfaced with these gears. Doink. Things can slide around just a little bit and kind uh-huh. of self, uh, self-align, self yeah. Um, I, you know, it's I, I just really love in toy manufacturing when you find these places where things, they seem quite sloppy, yeah. but you realize that slop is because children are destructive uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and they have to, you know, people are gonna throw this thing across the room, they're gonna drop yeah, it, they're gonna right, step on right. it. And every decision here is based on understanding how destructive kids can be. Yeah, that's right. It's gonna get left in a lot of hot cars. Um, no, it's very, very robust. And the fact that it's still working all this time later, you know, 45, 50 years later is a, is a testament to the engineering that went into it. It really is. It's just amazing. Um, I'm getting so much enjoy. I'm getting so much like uh, revisited childhood enjoyment out of seeing <laughs> these things and like reconnecting with 13 year old me being like, oh, I see this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did this inspire some of your interest in how things are made? Well, what's funny is. I didn't think of myself as mechanically gifted at all. Uh-huh. And so I was doing stuff like figuring out how this worked and I wasn't talking to anyone about it. Yeah. I didn't have anybody to bounce off of. Yeah, I didn't yeah. have friends or anything. So it was like, it was all happening in a vacuum. Years later, I realized that like, oh, I had a pretty good sense of things, yeah, being yeah. able to picture picture stuff in my head. What an amazing, amazing, beautiful uh, execution. And it, what I love is that it is trying to replicate the video game experience. That's right. Yeah, I, yeah. I, all the action's happening on a screen. Right, right. But it takes all of this mechanical arrangement to support what happens on that. Yeah, this is from a fascinating little slice of history, right, where you had video games in arcades, but it wasn't yet possible to bring them into the handheld world. And so yeah. this is imitating, yeah, the arcade game. 
um, but with totally mechanical means. Which is a, a really, re you're right. It is a specific moment in history yeah. where we're trying to do that. Yeah. All right. I think I've gushed enough about <laughs> Digital Derby. I want to move this to the side and move to our, yeah. our other character in this drama, the Copter Combat. No batteries, no lights, just wind it up. This is crazy. Pure entertainment in the back of your car. And then you start and you fire. Nope. I am terrible at this game. Oh, I got it. That's a great effect that it turns into something else. Yeah. Reset. Oh, dude. Boom. Oh, I this is get... something that these mechanical games are really good at. They can they give you the feeling of a of a hit. You can actually feel it in your hands. I'm really impressed. Haptics, and really I, I think the shooting is the same piece of film over and over yeah, and over yeah, again. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look inside yeah. this guy. So here's the CT scan of the of Whoa. This, this game. Um, you There's can a see lot going on in pretty there. immediately. Yeah. So first of all, no wires in this one, right? No electronics nice. at all. Um, down here, you have the uh, the the wind up mechanism. Right. And there's your 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 spring. Your there's power. the spring. Yeah. So it spools onto this uh, onto this thing, and it's got a ratchet too. You can tell this, these little arms here are part of the the ratcheting mechanism. Right, and then right. here's the here's this uh, swinging arm. So it also has a spool you, of of film. You can see it goes from from here to here. Yeah, it's yeah. running constantly. Um, and as this swings back and forth, these are the uh, the hit mechanisms. So in when we scanned it, two of these uh, were released. They had they were showing they were indicating a hit, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and the one on the right here was indicating no hit. Oh, so you get to see what. Yeah, I that's right. See. So they the the spring expands when there's a hit. So something is triggering um, this. Uh, something is triggering a release when when this film expands. touches one of the targets. That's it, right. That's right. Something touches a, a target, and uh, the spring expands. A sleeve pops down, and the indicator in the window changes from a space monster to kind of a splat. Right? Yeah, and that's and so we are able to see. Um, you know, here's so we're we're slicing up and down now. There's that there's that arm mm -hmm. that swings back and forth. Oh, um, oh, those are yeah, and you you can see you know there. Are oh, those are of, the springs we're looking at. Yep, those are the springs. Um, the two on the left have have uh, have have been hit, and the one on the right hasn't yet. Um, so somewhere in that one, we should be able to see a catch mechanism. Yep, somewhere up here, we can basically start to see that here. So we're we're zooming in here, um, and. Uh, if we look really carefully, I'm, I'm like gonna, you know, crop down from yeah. the from the top here, um, oh. right at the tops of these of these springs, are these um, are these catches? Oops. Oh, and so there might be a slot in the film that touches those catches. That's right. And so I think if we, yeah, here this is a this is a close up. Um, you can very faintly see. Um, the icon of the of the missile. Oh yes, I can. There. Yeah, and as so we... wait a second. I'm just sorry. I just want to highlight that this scanner is sensitive enough to pick up the screen printed ink on the cellophane That's as right. well as the cellophane. Yeah, exactly. That's impressive. Um, so here's the cross view, right? You can oh, see... you slice right through the shooting yeah, film so and this it's is... spools. That's right. This is aligned to the arm, um, and so you can see the film. Uh, wow. Wrap around the spools here, and there, there you can see the the sprocket holes, right? In yep, the, yep, in the film. yep. So we're gonna slice back in the other direction. Oh, ooh, wait. Oh no, those are just look like. There's the sprocket yeah. holes. So we, but we should be able to see. You know, those, uh, just being able to see this coming around that those are the sprockets, and this looks like it might yeah. be 16 millimeter film sliced down. Yeah, but the sprockets look longer than film sprockets. Sprocket holes. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. The hole in the film that triggers it is right by the. It's it's immediately above the uh, the the missile. 
so that as the missile hits the oh. target, the hole has already looped back under the the arm right. and and triggers the catch on uh, on the spring spring loaded target. Interesting. Oh, okay, hold on. Yes, no, it's below it. It's below it. Watch this. Yeah, I just saw it. All right. So when you watch when you watch the thing fire, there is the there slot. It is. Yep. Okay. So you can see it right under there. Boop. Yep. Okay. And great. it's that that catches. You know, one of the things I love about uh, 3D printing and rapid prototyping these days is people are resuscitating old mechanical things and playing around with mechanical arrangements yeah. because it's so much cheaper now to do it when you can 3D print it. I, I find myself hoping that there's a resurgence of playing around with formats like this. Yeah. Mechanical versions of old of of of, of other kinds of games because there's something so. Um, both primitive and really delightful about how much intelligence and ingenuity and problem solving went into these yeah, yeah. to thread this particular needle. Yeah, and as the world becomes more digital, I think people do appreciate this kind of thing more because it, there's a remarkable ingenuity there and there's also a real connection that you as a player feel to the game that you don't in a video game. This is trying to get a certain kind of gameplay and everything is mechanical. Yeah. So every last thing has to be done physically in the world. You can't just move a lever and it's a little that's harder. That's right, that's right. Yeah, the engineering process, the product development process here must have been incredible because you can't make last minute changes to the gameplay. You have to figure out the gameplay first and then you do all this mechanical design and then you do all this design for manufacturing. And if at the end you say, you know what, I think this game ought to move 10% faster like you could with a video game, that's really out of the question with this. So they locked it in and, and went, uh, went through the whole process. It was incredible. Well, John, I really appreciate the deep dive, literal and figurative, that we're able to do on these. They're mechanical marvels. That's right. These are amazing pieces of history. Thank you so much for sharing them with us. And the scans are available, yes? Yeah, that's right. You can just go to the link in the show notes. The link in the show notes and see the scans for yourself. And if you want to make one of these, I want to support you. I think it's a great idea. John, thank you so much. Thank you, Adam. 